House Tarth of Evenfall Hall is an ancient noble house from Evenfall Hall on the large island of Tarth, a beautiful island northeast of Shipbreaker Bay that controls the Strait of Tarth between the island and mainland Westeros. They are one of the main houses sworn to House Baratheon of Storm's End, and before them, the Storm Kings of House Durandon. Their banner is quartered with yellow suns on rose and white crescent moons on azure. Something common among the more ancient houses of Westeros is the addition of titles related to their lordship. For example, the Lords of Tarth call themselves the Evenstar. The island of Tarth is said to be beautiful, having lakes, waterfalls, soaring mountains, high meadows, and shadowed vales. Tarth is called the Sapphire Isle for its striking blue seas in which it sits. A spine of mountains with hidden valleys run down its centre. The ancestors of House Tarth were once kings in their own right. The island of Tarth came under the dominion of the Storm Kings of House Durandon when Durin the Fair married the daughter of Tarth's king, Edwin Evenstar. Even back in those ancient days, the head of the family and the Lord of Tarth was known as the Evenstar, which they claim dates back to the Dawn Age of Westeros. However, much like most family legends, the story has changed and adapted over time. Given Tarth's location, it was the first region of House Durandon's Kingdom of the Storm to be conquered during the Andal invasion of Westeros. The Durandon Storm Kings and their first men Bannermen eventually intermarried with the Andals, thus bringing Tarth back under their control, thus the Andal ancestry. Some say the Kingdom of Tarth dates back even further. Morn on the eastern coast of Tarth, once the seat of a petty king, who was conquered by the Storm Kings. But the maesters of the Citadel believe the site was of Andal origin, not First Men, but this idea is very hard to prove. Nobles and small folk alike from Tarth claim descent from Galadon of Morn, regardless. Marble from Tarth was used during the construction of the Eyrie in the Vale of Arryn. The huge slabs were taken by ship to the Vale, where they were transported up the mountain passes to where the castle stands today. Some monarchs during the Targaryen era of Westeros kept fleets along the western coast of the island as its mountains shielded against storms and makes the Strait of Tarth more passive than the narrow sea or Shipbreaker Bay. However, once Dawn joined the Seven Kingdoms, the amount of ships stationed off Tarth decreased. During the reign of Jaehaerys the Conciliator in the aftermath of the Mirish bloodbath of 91-92 AC, Pirates from Mir took over the eastern coast of the island. Lord Corlys Velaryon joined his fleet with the soldiers of Lord Borman Baratheon to retake the island. Prince Aemon Targaryen joined them on his dragon Caraxes and flew to a hidden mountain camp where he found Lord Cameron Tarth. However, a Mirish scout killed the prince with his crossbow, but it is believed his intended target was in fact Lord Cameron and the fact that Aemon was hit was pure coincidence. Prince Balon Targaryen, Aemon's younger brother, retaliated by burning the Miri ships with his dragon, Vagar, while Cameron and Borman Baratheon slaughtered the thousands of Mirmen on land. Some have argued that that stray crossbow bolt inadvertently set House Targaryen on the path to the Dance of the Dragons. However, none could have foreseen this at the time. At the start of the Dance of the Dragons, in 129 AC, Sir Otto Hightower correctly believed that the even star of Tarth would be among the powers of the Narrow Sea who supported Rhaenyra Targaryen. Having Tarth on her side would be a big win for Rhaenyra's cause, allowing them to use Tarth as a base to gain easy access to the Stepstones and block any naval support of King Aegon II coming from the west coast. In 133 AC, during the Daughters' War, Lord Brendamere Tarth supplied 12 longships to the fleet of Sir Gedman Peak, the master of ships during this era. In 133, Gedman stopped at Tarth while sailing for the Stepstones, but while moored there, Lord Alan Valarian, the Oaken Fist, led the Valarian contingent of the fleet south without the leave of Gedman and defeated the Bravosi ship in a sudden attack. Lord Unwin Peak, the Hand of the King and Protector of the Realm, was displeased, however as Gedman's soldiers were left behind at Tarth with the rest of the fleet, and Alan was thus unable to capture Bloodstone as a result, the main goal of the mission. In the main book series, we are first introduced to House Tarth by a Sir Edrew Tarth, who is stationed in the Shadow Tower of the Night's Watch. He is recalled to Castle Black to train the new recruits as Master at Arms after Sir Alistair Thorne is sent away. 
during the events of A Clash of Kings, when Stannis Baratheon sends Davos Seaworth to rally the Stormlands to his cause, Lord Selwyn Tarth only agreed to a midnight meeting in a grove where he informed Davos that he intended to declare for Renly Baratheon during the War of Five Kings. Lord Selwyn Tarth's daughter, Brienne, won the melee at Britterbridge, defeating Sir Ronit Connington and Sir Loris Tyrell. As a reward, King Renly grants her a place in his Rainbow Guard, his equivalent of the King's Guard. But Brienne is forced to flee with Lady Catelyn Stark when she is suspected as the killer of Renly Baratheon, who in fact died in her arms. Brienne then goes into Catelyn Stark's service, to whom she is fiercely loyal later during the events of A Storm of Swords. At Riverrun, following Catelyn Stark's orders, Brienne escapes the castle with Sir Jaime Lannister, who had been held prisoner there for some time. It was the hopes of Catelyn that by freeing Jaime, she would be freeing her daughters. However, she did this without the consent of her son, King in the North, Rob Stark. Thus, a detachment of Northmen were sent to hunt down the pair, along with their escort, Sir Cleos Frey. Jaime and Brienne, together, would travel the Riverlands, and after a perilous journey, they would make it to King's Landing. By this time, the hardship they had gone through together had brought them closer, with mutual respect. In King's Landing, after the events of the Red Wedding and the death of Catelyn Stark, Brienne is entrusted by Jaime to look for Catelyn's daughters, who had escaped the city, and gives her his Valerian steel sword, named Oathkeeper. During the events of A Feast for Crows, Brienne unsuccessfully searches the Crownlands and Riverlands for Sansa Stark while following Arya Stark's track. Later, along with her squire, Podrick Payne, Brienne is captured by the Brotherhood Without Banners and is sentenced to death by Lady Stoneheart, the revived Catelyn Stark, who believes that Brienne has betrayed her and is now working for the Lannisters. Brienne is given a choice, sword or noose, either prove her loyalty by killing Jaime Lannister or hang. At first, Brienne refuses to choose and is sentenced to hang, along with her two companions, Podrick and Sir Hyle. According to a source considered semi-canon, when she sees Podrick choking, she shouts sword to save him. Having been spared by the Brotherhood, Brienne appears briefly at Penny Tree when Jaime camps there. She asks Jaime to help her save Sansa Stark from the Hound, claiming that they are a day's ride away. Brienne tells Jaime, however, that he must go with her alone, or the Hound kills Sansa, and until the Winds of Winter is released. This is all we currently know of House Tarth and its history. <laughs>